Now we're going to talk about hypothesis testing and confidence intervals for the two sample t-test where we have two completely separate groups compared on a mean. So the formulas that we're talking about are on your yellow sheet way here at the bottom. Two samples, variance is unequal. So there's the formula for confidence interval, there's the formula for hypothesis testing. Okay, so that's where you'll find the formulas for this chapter, for this chapter, the two sample t-test, the two sample t-test. So first, hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing, remember this is a symbol for the mean of the entire population, mu, and this is y bar, that's the symbol for the sample mean. So we're using our sample mean always to estimate what's true in the population. So when we're doing hypothesis testing, we're asking a yes-no question, or making some sort of a claim about the two groups. So in this case, is there a difference in means between our two populations? The null hypothesis is always that there's nothing going on. There is no difference. There is no change. So our null hypothesis is that the mean of the first population is equal to the mean of the second. And then the alternate, well, depending on what we're interested in, do we think the mean of the first is less than the second, or not equal to, or greater than? But something other than equal to. Something other than equal to. And then we'll take samples to see what we think is true. So we take samples, we get two, now we have two groups, so we have two of everything. Two sample means, two sample standard deviations, two sample sizes. And we want to see how the difference in our sample means compares to our null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is that there is no difference, so there's an implied minus zero here. How does the difference in our sample means compare to the zero difference we hypothesized? So we'll compute that t statistic. And then we'll go to table T to find the p-value. Now table T, we need to have degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom. Now for the two sample t-test, when we assume unequal variances, the formula for computing the degrees of freedom is very complicated. So I will always give that to you or we'll do this on the computer and let the computer give it to us. Uh, so you will never have to compute that. If if you don't have any uh, way to compute it or it's not given to you, then you can just take the smaller sample size minus one. So we've got two groups, two sample sizes. If you have no estimate of the degrees of freedom, pick whichever is smaller, n1 or n2, and subtract one. But I should always give it to you. So remember how to find a p-value in the table? Well, we're going to find our degrees of freedom down the side, and then we go across to find our t-statistic, then we go up to the top to find our p-value. So we've got two-tailed probability, that's when our alternate is not equal to, and we have one-tailed probability, that's when our alternate is greater than or less than. So the only difference is that the two-tailed is twice the one-tailed. So if this is 0.1, that's 0.2, that's 0.05, that's 0.10. So let's try one. Let's try one. So the February 24, 2020 online version of the Lancet Respiratory Medicine examined people who were critically ill with the coronavirus in Wuhan, China in January, compared 32 non-survivors to 20 survivors. And they compared the group on many variables, including age. So the 32 non-survivors had an average age of 64.6 with a standard deviation of 11.2. The 20 survivors had a mean age of 51.9 with a standard deviation of 12.9. We wonder if the non-survivors are older on average than the survivors. I mean, certainly there are going to be individual non-survivors who are younger than individual um, people who survived. So um, there's, going to be a, there's going to be a mix when you look at the individuals. So we're wondering on average what is true. On average, how do the non-survivors compared to the survivors. So first, we have two separate independent groups. Yep, we have survivors and non-survivors with no matching or pairing of any kind. Are we comparing them on a quantitative variable? Yep, we're comparing them on age, which is quantitative. And are we making a claim, asking a yes, no question, so we need hypothesis testing? Yes. Are the non-survivors older on average? So we need exactly the two sample t-test, the two sample t-test, assuming we have a normal distribution for age and that sort of thing, okay? So our null hypothesis 
is that the mean age of the non-survivors is equal to the mean age of the survivors. And then our alternate is that the survivors, the non-survivors, the people who died, are older. So the null, there's no difference in average age between non-survivors and survivors. The alternate is that the non-survivors, the people who died, are older on average than those who lived. We compute the t-statistic, plug in all the means and standard deviations and sample sizes, and we get a t-statistic of 3.63. Then we need to find the p-value. Degrees of freedom are 36.2. 36.2. Well, obviously there is no 36.2, so we are going to drop down to 35. Uh, just be a little more conservative, drop down in our degrees of freedom, and look for 3.63. 3.63 is off the charts in this direction. We go to the top. Our alternate is greater than, that's one-sided. But what's happening to the p-values as we move in that direction? They're getting smaller. So we don't know what the p-value is out here, but we know it's less than 0 0.005. Make a decision. If our p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we're going to reject the null. No matter what alpha we pick, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, 0 0.10, our p-value is less than or equal to that. So we reject the null hypothesis that the average age is the same among non-survivors and survivors, and we believe the alternate that the people who died on average are significantly older than the people who lived. So that is hypothesis testing, hypothesis testing. And um, now we want to do confidence interval, confidence interval. So with a confidence interval, we want to estimate the difference in population means. How big is the difference in average age between non-survivors and survivors? So we always start with what we see in our sample. So what's the difference in sample means between those who died and those who lived? But we know if we had a different sample of people who died and people who lived, of the coronavirus, uh, we'd get different sample means. And so we're going to add and subtract the margin of error, the margin of error. So how close do we think this difference is to the true difference among all non-survivors and all survivors? So most of this we get from our sample, sample means, sample standard deviation, sample sizes. We've got everything, uh, two of everything, but we've got two groups. So the one thing we need yet is our T statistic, which we will again get from table T. Remember to find the T statistic for a confidence interval. We find our degrees of freedom. We find our level of confidence. So our degrees of freedom was 36.2, drop down to 35. We want 95% confidence. If we want a 95% confidence interval, if we want to be 95% confident we're catching the truth, so bring those together. And our t-statistic is 2.03, 2.03. So we plug everything in. Sample means, sample standard deviation, sample sizes in 2.03, and we get a confidence interval of 5.6 to 19.8. So how much older, on average, are the people who died than the people who lived? Well, we don't know because we don't have access to all of them, but we think that the true difference in age between those who died and those who lived is somewhere between 5.6 and 19.8. The difference in average age between those who died and those who lived. Now the whole confidence interval is positive. We subtracted those who died, the age of those who died minus the age of those who lived. 
So when we go uh, this minus this and end up with a positive number, we know that the first one is bigger, bigger. So we're going bigger minus smaller to get positive. So the people who died are significantly older than the people who lived. How much older? Somewhere between 5.6 and 19.8 years. So remember if we did different levels of confidence, we'd get narrower or wider ones. If we were willing to be only 90% confident, then this would be a, a narrower range because we'd be more likely to miss the truth. In fact, it's 6.8 years to 18.6 years. So we squeeze it in on both sides, 6.8 to 18.6. If we wanted to be more confident of catching the true difference in age, in average age between the two groups, we could do a 99% confidence interval, then it would be wider. Then it would be 3.2 years difference to 22.2 years difference. So the range 3.2 years to 22.2 years is how much older on average those who died are than those who lived uh, with 99% confidence, with 99% confidence. So when we look at a confidence interval for a difference, for a difference, we first we look at the signs. First we look at the signs. In this case, they're both positive, so we know the first group has the higher mean, the higher mean. Those who died have a higher mean age than those who lived, how much higher in this range. If these had both been negative, then we would know that the group who uh, survived was older um, because the difference would be negative. Smaller among this bigger gives us a negative number. If our confidence interval crosses zero, if it goes from a negative to a positive, then our confidence interval contains zero. So then zero would be an entirely reasonable guess at the truth, the true difference in mean um, ages between those who died and those who lived. And then we would say there was no significant difference between those who died and those who lived in average age. So the confidence interval helps us estimate the difference in population means. How big is the difference? How big is the difference somewhere in this range? Um, and uh, hypothesis, hypothesis testing, is there a difference? Is there a difference? We hypothesize there's not. We collect sample data. We see how often we'd see sample data like that, a, a difference in sample means like that, if there was actually no difference, if we would rarely see such a big difference by chance when there's actually no difference, um, then we would reject that there's no difference and believe there is some sort of a difference. So a two sample t-test, two groups compared on a mean. 